I really feel like Tsukimichi found its groove with this week's episode. You know, say what you will about the season, it may have had its ups and downs for many, but I think episode 7 of season 2 really, it finds its groove and it lets the plot truly thicken in the way that it needs to because maybe it's just me, but it, it wasn't simply once the Gorgons took their blindfolds off that things were turning to stone. Things were getting rock hard even before they took those blindfolds off. That's some pretty powerful Medusa energy and uh... God, I love anime. I just think of when I say shit like this. My ancestors, if they truly can look down on me and see what I do for a living, the disappointment they must have is is priceless. But um, truly, the amount of plot that was on our screen this week, uh, we go from like flying creatures that are like whatever and then i shit you not man the difference in quality that they gave the flying people doing the interview to the gorgons it wasn't just because they were busting out of their tops the sharpness the character detail was like three to four times more precise the anime team knew what they were doing and we thank them for it i have a full live reaction over on my patreon do you want to see uh me shooketh by uh, what the Gorgons offered. It's over there if you're interested. This was uh, this was an episode in some. Honestly, hell kind of froze over this week. You have to be honest. We've seen the anime, the isekai with the character who can't cook, but um, I truly thought it would never happen. And if it did, there might be like weeks or arcs down the line. Mio can cook now. This is not a drill. She can legitimately cook. I thought they were gonna pull the rug from under our feet. I was like, no way. She like, she basically ordered in and out or something. I was like, there's no way she actually can cook. And then she busts out her homemade mayonnaise, which I'm a little skeptical on the mayonnaise bit. I was like, you know, I, I don't know if I want to trust that spider's mayonnaise, but that's just me. I don't remember the last time I've seen the character who would poison you if you ate their food legitimately cook this well this quickly. That has to be the fastest turnaround, and I think I severely underestimated Mio, because if she puts her mind to it and has a proper teacher, she learns quite well. And honestly, this is a good episode. I mean, beyond just the, the 12 pieces of plot that they'll throw in your face at any given moment, um, I counted, mind you, I, I legitimately counted. Two of those characters are half off screen, so only half of their plot count, but I digress. Uh, this was a great episode, because everyone's kind of together now. The only one who wasn't really on screen this episode is the uh, shitty hero and his princess, because obviously we... We dipped out of there. The night and day difference between Tomoe and Mio was honestly amazing. We basically have like a edgy fuckboy and we have a kind of like needy little sister. Like that's the difference these two went through. And while of course Mio is like, you know, I have a master, I, I'm good, I'm not going to help you anymore. But, you know, maybe if you show me some new recipes, I'll tag along someday and, you know, for a little vacation. It's just a night and day difference in terms of Tomoe being like, yeah, like I read their minds. They're just horrible people. They're scumbags. I hate them all. And yeah, they're going to make guns too. So that's kind of shitty. And then we have Mio being like, yeah, thanks for teaching me, but I can't go. I have a master. I don't care about anything else. And I'm like, the night and day difference is fantastic. But the star attractions was definitely Shiki, who I felt bad for. I mean, who can safely say with a straight face that we too have not had a few mindless, horrible, evil experimentations run amok. Who of us cast the stone if you also haven't done that? Come on, justice for our boy. But I felt a little bad because uh, I don't want to get punished by Tomoe or Mio. I feel like you're just in for a bad time. At least with Gorgons, like, you might turn to stone, but I mean, you're already gonna be hard anyway, so I mean, it's not too much of an adjustment, but a giant dragon and spider, I just don't want to be on their bad side, so I kind of feel, like, ripped for our boy there. But it was funny, because just, it was, like, kind of a nice, like, return to form. This is, like, it felt like the later stages of Season 1, if my memory serves me. Granted, it's been a hot minute since I watched Season 1, but obviously, like, that's kind of, like, the vibe it was giving me, and it was just kind of fun to see the gang all here and see what they were up to. And it obviously led into the kind of recruitment phase of different people coming to the Demiplane, which the Demiplane's doing pretty well. Of course, the Misty Gates and everything, the weather and stuff, like, there's some, there's some worry, but in general, like, the children have a safe play area, they can grow their own food, like, they are literally set right now. And honestly, I like that. And then it leads into the recruitment phase where two get to pass and one is deferred. And honestly... I don't remember Emma being this feisty. I remember Emma had some feist to her. Maybe I'm misremembering, but I'm pretty sure this is the spiciest we've ever seen Little Miss Piggy. 
I'm pretty sure. The first people we pass with pretty much flying colors, like they're very nice. They're pretty much just like, we're all gonna die out here and you just saved our life. Thank you, master, you're amazing. Easy pass. And then we have um, the plot thickening and um, honestly, I don't think I can recall this one. Maybe I just haven't seen a lot of like Medusa-like Gorgon activity. But the fact that the paper turned to stone, the... Like, everything would turn to stone with the gaze, and I love the idea that it only takes him two attempts to basically override the Gorgon stare, which is pretty powerful. I mean, it's not often you could literally live a life where you have to keep your eyes, like, covered because, obviously, you don't want to hurt people, and... The idea of like trying to find sanctuary, like a safe place that you could stay, but the idea that, you know, even if this young master is amazing and Makoto is doing great, the general people are going to be turned to stone. He's like, nah, I, I got this. He's like, okay, what about this? Okay, hmm, that, that's not right. So I also have to add this little enhancement here. And within two attempts, he just solved the greatest curse that they've had to live with. Despite the fact that they're barely keeping in their tops, it's actually a pretty emotional scene on top of, um a scene where it's like hey my eyes are up here it's like are you sure about that one because uh it is what it is but i like the idea that the third ones are these like little fairies i'm thinking they're gonna be like tinkerbell like characters and no the fact that emma just like she's beating them over the head like she's bonked them being like these little shits i hope your i hope your family gets run over basically and i'm like damn Either it's Emma's time of the month or goddamn, she just really hates these creatures because holy shit, man, like she was feisty from minute one. And honestly, I've been thinking that Tomoe or Mia are like the most dangerous characters you could piss off. Maybe it's Emma. Emma might actually legitimately be the scariest character in this show if she really wants to because I don't think anyone can calm Little Miss Piggy if I'm being 100%. Like, this was a ridiculous episode. It was funny. It's kind of nice having the group all together. but It's probably hell freezing over the fact that a character who should never be able to cook cooked successfully not once but twice um the plot was fantastic what more can you say about that and the comedy was on point like i like the little gags that we'll get even with characters like shiki where he's just his va during that scene when he was admitting to his um his little experimentations and he's actually responsible for the bullshit his va was fantastic the nervous stammering the stuttering and how he's basically begging he's pleading the fifth man he's like please for the love of god do not do this and honestly I felt for him because he's definitely like my favorite character in season two so far outside of obviously the Gorgons for obvious reasons. And um, yeah, so let me know what you thought because this was a uh, a thickening of the plot, so to speak, with hell freezing over all tied into one. So uh, let me know what you're feeling down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload more Tsukimichi to the channel. Like I mentioned, we have that full live reaction over on my Patreon. And hey, while you're over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. All right, so today we have Siras, Joe, Ryuki, Beatrice, Isaac Farnsworth and Zuda. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care. Have a good one.